Sam Altman and OpenAI think that their new deep research product is so powerful that it can do a single-digit percentage of all economically valuable tasks in the world. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. As we have discussed quite a bit, last week all of the discussion was around DeepSeek. How powerful it was, what the geostrategic implications were, how it was likely to impact the AI industry, what it meant for the stock market. This was the conversation, and it's quite clear that OpenAI did not love being second fiddle. Today, we're going to discuss OpenAI's latest reasoning model release, some interesting comments from Sam Altman on open source, and why they think their new deep research product is an agent that can actually do a percent or more of all economically valuable work on the planet. First off, though, let's start with the basic news. On Friday, OpenAI released O3 Mini, the latest in their line of reasoning models. The model promises similar performance to the O1 family of models, but with increased speed and reduced cost. OpenAI claims that external testers preferred answers from O3 Mini over O1 Mini more than half the time in A-B testing. They also observed a 39% reduction in major errors on difficult real-world questions. The new model includes three different settings for reasoning effort, low, medium, and high. These settings determine how much compute is used and allow the model more time to come up with a response. At the highest setting, O3 Mini is capable of beating the full version of O1 on some benchmarks related to coding science and mathematics questions. OpenAI is also making this model extremely developer-friendly from day one. It's already available through APIs and is the first reasoning model to support function calling, structured outputs, and developer messages. OpenAI says this will make it production-ready out of the gate. And indeed, it definitely feels like this release was informed by the release of DeepSeek. Specifically, breaking from the pattern they've had recently of announcing certain models but then only making them available to paid or even pro tiers, this model is available for free users as well. That makes it the first reasoning model accessible in the free tier and a break with OpenAI's usual staged rollout. Pricing is also much more competitive than we're used to seeing from OpenAI. API access is 63% cheaper than O1 Mini and roughly twice the cost of DeepSeek R1. Paid tier customers will now have rate limits of 150 queries per day, which is three times as many as O1 Mini. Reflecting on just how big a change we've seen in a very short period of time, Professor Ethan Malik commented, Two weeks ago, reasoning models, which are the strongest at hard problems, were only available for subscription. Now, if you don't want to pay, you can get reasoners for free from Microsoft Copilot, O1, ChatGPT, O3 Mini, or DeepSeek R1. The best reasoners, O1 Pro and O3 Mini High, still cost. He also added Gemini Flash thinking as well, but you have to use Google AI Studio. Yet to some, this release felt quiet compared to the hype that normally surrounds a new model from OpenAI. Benjamin DeCracker, who, grain of salt, is a member of the XAI data team, wrote, Vibe check, O3 Mini release reaction feels very muted, underwhelming, not seeing as much excitement on the timeline. Tier Taxes writes, I don't know what they could have released short of GPT-5 Tier Shocker to regain narrative momentum. Small, very strong model is a good move. And indeed, while there wasn't stop the presses kind of energy around this, lots of folks were impressed. Coffee Vectors prompted O3 Mini to create a 3D water simulation that would run in Blender. The model created a full Python script compatible with the rendering software, although it did take a few tries. Mike Bespalov created a fully functioning image to ASCII art conversion app. He wrote, Okay, OpenAI's O3 is insane. Spent an hour messing with it and built an image to ASCII art converter, the exact tool I've always wanted. And it works so well. Yeah, older models could do this, but with O3, I didn't rewrite a thing. No debugging, no retries. Just a few prompts and boom, it worked. Like, perfectly. Adana Singh, a contributor to the Minecraft Bench Project, showed how dramatic the difference between O1 and O3 Mini was on creative tasks. When prompted to build an amazing large organic and epic floating island city in Minecraft, the improvement was very noticeable. Some people even found ways for O3 Mini to compete head-on with DeepSeek's R1. O3 Mini created a much better version of a realistic physics demo of a ball bouncing around a hexagon. It also outcompeted in a simple snake game. Mark Adala Maria writes, ChatGPT just released O3 and it's by far the best AI coding model. It can one-shop full apps instantly and people are doing some amazing things. Still, I think it's fair to say that at least initially the hype was subdued. However, that wasn't the only thing that OpenAI had in store for the weekend. On Sunday, they released a new agent called Deep Research. The agent can access the internet to conduct multi-step research and compile a report. OpenAI wrote, It accomplishes in tens of minutes what would take a human many hours. Powered by a version of the full O3 model, the agent can ingest a huge amount of data from text, images, and PDFs, and also has the ability to redirect its research based on the information it gathers. OpenAI wrote, The ability to synthesize knowledge is a prerequisite for creating new knowledge. For this reason, deep research marks a significant step towards our broader goal of developing AGI which we have long envisioned is capable of producing novel scientific research. As OpenAI says, this is built for people who do, quote, intensive knowledge work. They write, every output is fully documented with clear citations and a summary of its thinking, making it easy to reference and verify the information. 
It also says it's particularly effective at finding niche, non-intuitive information that would require browsing numerous websites. While it's only been out for a very short period of time, some people have had early access and were quick to jump in and share their thoughts. Professor Ethan Malik again writes, OpenAI's deep research is very good. Unlike Google's version, which is a summarizer of many sources, OpenAI is more like engaging an opinionated, often almost PhD-level researcher who follows a lead. More of an agentic solution than Google's approach, which is much less exploratory but examines far more sources. If you want an overview, Google's version is really good. If you want a researcher to go digging through a few sources, getting into the details but being very opinionated, you want OpenAI's. Neither has access to paywalled research and publications, which limits them for now. Kevin Bryan, an associate professor of strategic management at the University of Toronto, put the feature through its paces. He asked it to analyze the McKinley Tariff of 1890 through the lens of modern trade theory. It produced an 18-minute academic-style paper complete with citations in 10 minutes. Bryan added, How good can it do literally one shot? I mean, not bad. Honestly, I've gotten papers to referee that are worse than this. The path from here to steps where you can massively speed up the pace of research is really clear. He also believes this has some big implications for universities, adding, I think the research uses are obvious here. I would say for academia, the amount of AI slop you're about to get is insane. In 2022, I pointed out that undergrads could AI their way to a B. I am sure for B-level journals, you can publish papers you quote-unquote wrote in a day. Many institutions will need to change to handle tech like this, and it's only getting better by the month. Still, I think for many, their minds were not on the academic uses, but on the economic potential. Sam Altman commented, This is like a superpower experts on demand. It can go use the internet, do complex research and reasoning, and give you back a report. It's really good and can do tasks that would take hours a day and cost hundreds of dollars. He even added in almost a throwaway line, My very approximate vibe is that it can do a single-digit percentage of all economically valuable tasks in the world, which is a wild milestone. Now, yes, grains of salt, perhaps even bags and bags full of salt, when it comes to the fact that A, this is the CEO of a company who is currently reportedly raising more money, and B, is only saying my approximate vibe, but still the fact that he is willing to say that this new agent can do a single-digit percentage of all economically valuable tasks in the world which would represent over a trillion dollars of value, is fundamentally nuts. Daria Anumaz, a professor at the Jackson Laboratory, wrote, I can finally reveal that I've had access to OpenAI's deep research since Friday, and I've been using it nonstop. It's an absolute game changer for scientific research, publishing, legal documents, medicine, education. For my test, but likely many others. I'm just blown away. Every Dan Shipper had an even more bombastic take, tweeting, It absolutely blew my mind. First AI product to do that in a while. Here's what it felt like to me. It is a chauffeured stretch limo for the information superhighway. It is a double-decker tour bus, but you're the only passenger and the city you're touring is the sum total of human knowledge. It's C-3PO, but less neurotic. It's Samuel Tarly, but not as bumbling. It's Hermione if she ever got tired. In other words, it is a bazooka for the curious mind. Now, I have just started to play around with it. I've got something running right now. Later in the week, I am definitely going to do a use cases type episode. But these are big words and big claims, and I, for one, am excited to see what actually is possible. Now, lastly today, I wanted to hit these comments from Altman around open source. From a sheer access standpoint, DeepSeek and OpenAI have put extremely powerful reasoners in the hands of a ton of people. Noam Brown wrote, O1 was released less than two months ago. O3 Mini was released two days ago. Deep Research was released today. It's a powerful tool, and I can't wait to see what the world does with it, but AI will continue to progress rapidly from here. Sam Altman can clearly feel the acceleration. He's been publicly discussing the rapid approach of AGI for months, And during a Reddit AMA over the weekend, one person asked whether recursive self-improvement of AI models would be a gradual process or a hard takeoff. Altman responded, I personally think a fast takeoff is more plausible than I thought a couple of years ago. Probably time to write something about this. Another Redditor asked whether OpenAI would consider releasing model weights and publishing research. Altman said, Yes, we are discussing. I personally think we've been on the wrong side of history here and need to figure out a different open source strategy. Now, what exactly that means, we don't know, but pretty interesting to see the tune shift there. A couple more things to get you excited before we get out of here. Chief Product Officer Kevin Wheel says that they're still working on the 4.0 image generator and that it's going to be worth the wait. And apparently a full O3 version is coming in, quote, more than a few weeks, less than a few months. So that is the story here. For those of you with pro access, let me know what you are doing with deep research, whether it's working or not. And like I said, I will be back later this week with an update from my own explorations as well. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.